Hello, PAX. We are live. This is PAX Online Live. There's a lot of canned content on PAX Online. Uh, a lot of people recorded their stuff in advance. Hey, that's great. You know, so forth. No, we're live. We screw up. You get to see it happen. Uh, and by the way, that is a given. That is going to happen. I'm Mike Selinker. I am your host for this evening, but I have come with a new with a new co-host. We're going to double host this thing. Uh, Will, tell people who you are. Hi, I'm Will. I am a puzzle master, so to speak. Uh, I write many trivia, many games, and many puzzles to stump people. That's correct. You've answered the first question correctly. Yeah. You're I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I win. Champion! Champion! <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna, excellent news. All right. So uh, those of you who come to uh, our game show before, this is a PAX tradition. I believe this is the seventh or eighth installment uh, of this. Um, it used to be called uh, Mike Selinker's Can You Survive This Panel? Because in that panel, we would... Uh, over the course of it, kill all of the audience, you know, because that's the kind of people we are. And uh, but but we we're doing something a little different this time because we don't have a live audience. I mean, you're live, obviously. Thank God we don't want you to be a dead audience. But um, but uh, but you can't interact directly with us in the way we want. So we decided to mix it up a little bit and come up with a new name, new name for this. It's called Sabotage Trivia. Yes, sabotage. it's true. Sabotage. All right, so here's how this is going to work. No, I'm sorry. Here's how the theory of this is. <laughs> right, this is all in theory. You know, we've never tried this. We don't know. Um, but uh, here's what we're going to do. We are going to, we have gotten questions from the audience. We've each gotten uh, about, we got about 25, 30 questions each. Um, we haven't seen them. We haven't looked at them. We have no idea what they say, right? Um, I am going to ask Will, uh, we're going to go back and forth. Uh, and so, like, I will ask Will a trivia question that you, the audience, have submitted, which is great, except this is sabotage trivia. So I'm going to, yes, so I'm going to sabotage the question. So sabotage. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace one of the words in the question with a different word. Yeah, you're acting like you're surprised. I like that. Um, yeah, what? That changes everything, Will says. He's never heard that. I don't sign up for this at all. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, I guess I'm doing this alone then. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace one of the words. Uh, Will has to try to figure out what the original question was. And if he can get the answer right, figure out what word was changed, uh, he, will, uh, he will get two points. Now, here's how points work. Um, we've each chosen a sacrificial set of a hundred things um so uh will would you like to tell us what you are are uh, sacrificing so i decided to take something from america's finest literature uh -huh. and uh, rip out pages from one to a hundred out of what? it so taking a very notable book and ripping pages one through a hundred that would be the maze of games by <laughs> mike selinker <laughs> <laughs> and I plan on ripping out pages one through a hundred of this book. Critics have said this book doesn't really get good until page one hundred one, anyway. So that's all right. You that's all right. You can't Plus, the rip. best stuff is in the back. There's like a puzzle by me back there. So there you is, don't want to rip is. out that page. You can't rip up my book on camera. <laughs> this sounds like a great idea. No, so I, I you're right. You, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that to this fine, oh, yeah, wonderful sorry. literature. By Little Shark Games. Uh, so uh, what I decided to do is uh, I decided that no matter what my score is, here at the end, I'm going to donate that much money to feedingamerica.org. And I, I, I recommend that everybody else does the same thing, too. For every dollar that you put out there, for every, uh, excuse me, $10 you put out there, you can get 20 meals, or 200 meals, I believe, for helping people who are in need. So to help me count, I have these fine pictures of my dog, <laughs> Oliver, with the dollar bill in the fine tradition of National Lampoon trying to sell their <laughs> magazine, I have this picture of my dog with the dollar bill, and I have 100 of them. I have 100 of them to tear through in oh, case I need gonna, to. You're going to rip up pictures of your dog. That's such a cute dog. You don't Look want... at how scared he is. <laughs> Look at no. that. He is scared. No. Oh no, it's tragic. That's tragic. So right, you want to, Mike, you want to lose. Otherwise, yeah. you're making me do this to my dog. No, I normally, normally will. I would be completely there. I would be like, well, I can't. 
I can't have you sacrificing pictures of your adorable dog, Oliver. But you have to understand what I'm putting up uh, is a pretty serious thing. Now, everybody knows that uh, I have some, some weird proclivities. And one of them is that I really love Japanese Kit Kats. That's right? true. Yeah. So I got a bag of 100 of them. Uh, and I'm going to, every time I lose points, I'm going to eat one of these bars. Starting with the sriracha one, right? I, very possible. I mean, there's there's wasabi in here. There's right. there's uh, uh, r- rum raisin, uh, uji matcha, um, all sorts of things. Now, I'm gonna, now importantly, each bar uh, comes with two, so I'm going to only eat one of those. You know, whatever. But uh, but my wife says that uh, I'm going to be so sick, and she's she's probably right. Um, uh, so, you know, if you've, you've got, uh, uh, if you're watching this, uh, just dial the nine and the one now and just hit the one when you think it's really mm, necessary. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, when we see, when we see Kit Kat sweats coming down, we're, yeah. we'll be a little worried. Now, Mike, those, those are like legal, right? Those are legal Kit Kats. Those no, are, they're hundred percent. They're, they're Japanese Kit Kats in Japan. They, they, uh, basically they have some mad scientists who create radioactive monsters and variant- <laughs> Kit <Kat>. and <laughs> various Kit Kats. That's right. Yeah. And so the radioactive monster business is kind of down these days. So they're mostly, mostly Japan's economy is Kit Kats. And so oh, that that's, that's, that's how you survive a pandemic. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we're going to do. I have one more announcement to make and then we're going to start. Okay. Uh, if you like these kind of trivia games, things we make, uh, I want to show you this something we announced today is very first announcement from us is we made a game called Hint. Uh, you can get this from the Asmodee store starting today. And so if you want to play a game that's that's of this kind of mindset, uh, go there, go to Asmodee, hit the store and uh, pick up a copy. It's You'll get one of the first copies ever. Um, it's a really fun game, so so go play it. All right, commercial time over. But hey, I have something announced too. If you like getting these surviving pictures of Oliver, <laughs> I'm willing to sell you these and give that money to charity. That's so right. these survive. Look at that guy. All uh, right. He's adorable. You can't mess that up. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to show you how this works. You ready? You ready to? You ready to play? You ready to play? I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Okay. All right. So here's how this is going to work. It's just very simple. Um, Let's say the one of the fine folks out there submitted the trivia question, how many moons does Earth have, right? And Will, being a relatively smart guy, has looked up in the sky at least once in his life and uh, noticed that there's only one moon up there, right? So if I ask him that question, he's going to go one and I'm going to lose. So I have to change one of the words in that. So I'm going to change it to marshmallows. How many marshmallows does the Earth have? Now, Will could then think, oh, I haven't changed any of the words. Let me count up all the marshmallows. Or he can theorize that the answer is moons and, and, and come back with one. If he gets it right, um, I lose two points. Uh, if he uh, doesn't get it right, then he can ask me for the real question. And I will say, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I meant it was this. I'll read him the real question. And then if he gets that right, then I only lose one point. Okay. And whoever gets down to zero whoever uh, is uh, the loser of the game okay so you're playing uh, you're playing uh, for what charity again I'm sorry I'm gonna play for feedingamerica.org excellent I will be playing for the hometown crowd I'll be playing for child's play uh, one of my favorite charities so uh, you know we're gonna let's 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 raise some money and all of you out there please go to childsplay.com go to feedingamerica.com kicking some money if you like seeing yeah, two grown absolutely. men do stupid things like this all right will would you and like one to... of us one of us is going to get really sick tonight one of us is not, not gonna, me one of us is not, not going to be viewed very well by his dog so it's true and i right. read his journal every, i read his journal every night so trust me it's, ah. it's not going well right now as it is all right so would you like to receive first or give first i will receive all right i'm going to read the first question it's by a fellow named Dean Gersh. Um, okay. All right. Here's a question for you, Will. And again, I haven't changed any words in this. Don't worry about it. Uh, if oh, Washington great. is the evergreen state, what is New Jersey? 
Oh man. Evergreen no. state. Oh. Yeah. No, no. Well, I will let you know that Washington is the Evergreen State. Yeah, I'm going to think that you changed New Jersey. It's like Jersey is York or something. So I'm going to guess it's, uh, I'm going to guess the Empire State. You are correct. I did change York to Jersey. You have shown, so this now requires me to eat a Japanese kick What flavor will it be? Uh, this appears to be chestnut. Wasabi. Wasabi. Oh, no, no. We'll, get oh. we'll get to that later. I'm not starting with wasabi. Uh, I'm going to be eating this uh, chestnut flavor. Uh, chestnuts going down the. All right. Give us, oh, a, give us, a, oh, give us what? Give us a give us a review of on um, four stars. How was it? One through four. Chestnut, chestnuts very good. Chestnuts like a three point five. Yeah. Um. Good. good luck, everybody. You get to hear me chew during this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Uh, so uh, if you're on Twitch, you guys can go ahead and share answers with each other. We're not looking at any of the stream right now. So yep. feel free to guess the answers. Guess what you think we're going to be saying and what we're going to change. Right. We won't see any of that. Go on Discord as well. Uh, whatever you go. Go on one of those internet things. Discord. Um, <laughs> Discord. 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 <laughs> All right. This court hey, hey, sounds better. Hey, right. Will, do you have a question Are you ready? for me? Yeah. Mike, I have a question. I have not changed the words at all. Uh -huh. uh, Lord Lord Baden-Powell is best known for founding the Boy Scouts. What, mar what much larger mall is located diagonally across the street from the Baden-Powell house? This comes oh. from Richard Arons Arons Aronson. Okay, so it's across from the Baden-Powell house, right? Mm -hmm. Uh Oh man, did you change the word mall? <laughs> oh boy, what is opposite the Boy Scout headquarters? Um, I think you changed the word. You add you added the word mall. Um, uh, where is that? Uh, I think it's hospital, and I think it's the Mayo Clinic. Uh, you had correct that it is the it wasn't the mall. It's the museum. Museum, so museum. is your word, okay. Uh, okay. It's the Victoria and Albert Museum. Oh, Victoria you didn't give me a Albert chance museum. to do. Oh, you didn't give me a chance I'm sorry. To... Go ahead, go ahead and answer, Mike. What do you think uh, it is? It's the Victoria and Albert Museum. Ooh, no, it's the Albert and Victoria Museum. Oh, You're shoot. so close. <laughs> oh, of so course good. you are. So uh, uh, you you obviously have the question right, and yeah. you actually knew what the word was. You just didn't have the right yeah. one. So, yeah. Oliver. Hi, Oliver. Oh, you ripped up your dog. Oliver. <laughs> all right you ready for you ready for another yes question? there's all a right. special place in hell for me right now but go absolutely. ahead absolutely mine is gonna be a special place in the hospital uh that's true okay, this is from michael anderson categories disney okay i'm gonna read this question here um oh sure um right i think you changed the word sure no it's good uh, it's, i got it oh, oh, okay good. okay in the live action beauty and the beast movie Josh Gad played Gaston's sidekick LeFou. What other well-known non-Disney sidekick did Josh Gad voice? Uh, I, I didn't catch the last part of that. I think. Okay, I let, me, let me read it. Okay, so you got the Josh Gad part at the beginning. He, he, yeah, uh, yes. In the live-action Beauty and the Beast movie, Josh Gad played Gaston's sidekick, uh, Gaston's sidekick LeFou. What other well-known non-Disney sidekick did Josh Gad voice? I'm going to guess uh, the non-Disney is actually, you just mean to say Disney. Oh. And, and I'm guessing you're, you're thinking Olaf. That's correct. That's correct. You, you've seen through my duplicity. Yes, yes. All right. I, enjoy your Kit Kat, sir. I will. I'm going to eat the other half of this, uh, this um, chestnut. Ooh, Okay. Uh, but, so do you lose one or two on that one, right? Because I knew what the question was, and I and I knew the answer to that question, right? Yeah. Um, two, so Kit Kats uh, come in two in each packet. Right. Right. So if I lose one point, I'm only eating half a thing. Ah, I so see. If I lose two points, I eat two halves Excellent. of a bar. Okay. I'm, are, I'm, you keep, are you keeping score? I am giving score. Look, I have a lot of Kit Kat. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, <laughs> I, I have a lot of I have a lot of pictures of Oliver. So I want to point out how full this bag is. I'm that is a full bag. Full bag. And you know it could be worse. It could be like Canadian Kit Kats. It could all be like ketchup flavored oh, or something, Canadian or poutine are... or poutine flavored Kit Kats. Actually, That's so can can Canadian Kit Kats are gigantic. I would not make it through the entire. <laughs> <laughs> one, you get one question. All right, Mike, are you ready for this question? Which is also from Mike Anderson. 
All right. Uh, Stephen King wrote a number of novels, including Thinner, The Long Walk, and The Running Man Under a Blanket. What was the name, or what is that blanket? Okay, so the blanket that you're referring to is the one from Misery, right? The one where, yes. where uh, uh, no, of course, he wrote it under a pseudonym, and that pseudonym is Richard Bachman. All right, that's two Olivers for you. <laughs> two Olivers? Oh, you, you hold your Oliver upside down like Donald Trump holds a Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll do it with two hands, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we're getting somewhere. We're, we're getting somewhere, that's right. How's, how's your stomach so far? Good? So far, You're doing oh, right? I feel okay. great. I feel you great. feel great. I okay. feel great. That will change over time. All right, uh, you got a root beer there, I see. This is Sprecher's root beer. Very uh, good. I do love Sprecher's. It's real good. Okay. Uh, category is psychology. This is from Jay Schneider. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, uh, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay. What type of mania is ibophobia? <laughs> ibophobia? Oh my God! What type of phobia is ibophobia? <laughs> you did get the you did get the changed word correct. <sighs> I, I uh, uh, being by yourself. Oh, Will, you should have asked me a question back. Oh, you should have was? asked me, would you spell that? Oh, because then I would have spelled it A I B O H P H O B I A, and you would have known, you would have known, Pan that uh, palindromes. You would have known that it was spirit palindromes. Uh. I think I got that one. Bye, Oliver. Well Poor O L I V E R <laughs> or Rivolo. Rivolo. Uh, <laughs> <It's Rivello. laughs> All right, here you go. Mike, are you ready for this question? It's from Chris Batty. Okay. Uh, let me see what I got here. Uh, Albert Einstein was born in 1947 and has had a successful career as an actor and comedian. No, not that one. Albert Einstein, who has used uh, who has used what uh, stage direction for the past fifty years? Oh man! Okay, all right. So it's uh, tough when you haven't seen these questions ahead of time. I know, I know. So, so you changed Einstein. You changed. You can't have changed Einstein. Uh. Would you like me to spell Einstein? Do you no, think I'm good. I got it. It's a palindrome, <laughs> just like everything else. Um, I'm going to say that you changed direction from name. And the answer is Albert Brooks. It is Albert Brooks. It is. is I'm not getting the long. I'm getting a very long questions are really hard to change. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Another, another ripped up Oliver. All right. I hear my dog whelping in the background. I'm like, this has become voodoo. I hope that's not it's, true. Uh, it seems people have submitted. We had a lot of people who submitted questions. Thank you for doing that, by the way. Uh, yes, I have another one from Chris Batty. Uh, Pax. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, all right. I got to figure out how to phrase this. Uh, okay. Um, Right. Okay. Pax, P A X, Pax, mm -hmm. is the nickname of a mind altering chemical in what series whose title could also be translated as Pax? I'm super clever on this one, by the way. You are. Okay. Um, I, I feel like you've changed the name of the Pax at the end. I could have. Um, I want to say it's going to be, I, I don't know if I know the word, but I think your answer is going to be a clockwork orange, I think is the name. Oh, no, that's no. Maloko. Oh, Maloko. Uh, I'll tell you what word I changed. What word did you change? I changed, and it's really important. I changed movie to series. Ooh. So it's Pax is the nickname of a mind altering chemical in what movie whose title could also be translated as Pax. And I did that very intentionally. I don't know if I know it, but Pax is peace. So what's what what what, what movie title could be translated as Pax or peace? 
Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I know it. The answer is Serenity. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Serenity. Yes, yes. But, see, my goal was to get you to guess Firefly. If you oh, oh, nicely done. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Are All you right. Ready? Did you rip up any Olivers? <laughs> All right. Excellent. I'm ready for you. All right. Here we go. Uh, which lobe of the brain processes oral input? Oral input. I think you mean sensory input, but this would be good if I knew the answer. I think, I think it's the cerebellum. Uh, that is not correct. You were right that it's the visual is the thing. Visual that's input. Oh, is oh, the thing that you sure. want it to be. So if I said visual input, you would what say. What would I say? I would say that the part of the brain that processes visual input would be the cerebrum. It is the occipital lobe. Oh, the occipital lobe. Sure. Occipital yeah. lobe. Uh, enjoy really, your Kit Kat. Enjoy, I'm your enjoy Kit my Kit Kat. Uh, I think it's time for what do we got here? Ooh, how about a mandarin orange? A, oh, a yeah. satsuma. Ooh. A satsuma. I'm trying to go with the the less, you know, sort of dynamic flavors to start because sure. I think stomach's gonna be uh, a little bit difficult after this, but <laughs> I think, I mean, I, I would imagine everybody in Twitter right now is saying hit the wasabi and hit it hard. Do just, just, you think I should go early on the wasabi? Right. Again, anybody out there, if you see him having any kind of Kit Kat sweats at any right. point, don't hesitate right. to call the authorities. Yeah. Uh, all right. Interesting theory, audience. Um, okay. Uh, all right. By the way, that question was from Ewan McNay. Thank you, Ewan. Okay. This one's from Mike Sylvia. Okay. Oh, cool. All right. Um, okay, so uh, this uh, the famous American um, movie star B.F. Goodrich was named for an even more famous American. What does the B.F. stand for in B.F. Goodrich? Can you read that one more time? I don't know if I, I sure the can. The famous American movie star B.F. Goodrich was named for an even more famous American. What does the B.F. stand for in B.F. Goodrich? Oh, man, I don't know what you replaced there. That's that's not good. No, it's probably not. It's uh, the kind of thing that might end up in an Oliver being ripped up. What do you would think, you like Oliver? Me? I don't uh, know either. All right. I'm an Oliver lover. Um, uh, BF. Uh, let's see. Um, would you like me to tell you what word I replaced? I would like to hear what word you replaced. I replaced industrialist with movie star. Because BF Goodrich is a tire manufacturer. Yes, that's true. That's why. I, okay. What does the BF stand for? Yeah. Another question might be, what's a famous person's name that's BF? <laughs> Whose initials are BF? Uh, I don't think it's like Barack Firestein. Um, <laughs> Famous tire manufacturer, Barack Firestone. Uh, so I would say Barry Firestone is what I would say. <laughs> Barry Firestone, is that what you're going to go with? <laughs> That's what I'm going with. Well, I, I'm sad to hear that you've never heard of Benjamin Franklin. Who? Benjamin Franklin. He was a, ben? <laughs> he was a famous electrician. I Okay. I, I, yeah, he might, you know. He's no Tesla, but you know, whatever. No you know? Tesla. All right, All right, there's two Olivers out there. Two Olivers. How's your Oliver supply? My, daughter, my wife's not going to. No. All right, so let's see here. Uh, you got, uh, this is from uh, Ray Nakazawa. Okay. He writes, uh, let's see here. What, mind you, what was you the name? <laughs> was the name of the. Uh, television quiz show hosted by Daffy Duck in the 1950 Warner Brothers short, The Ducksters. What was the name of the quiz show? The quiz show. Uh, quiz might be the wrong word. Hosted by, the, by Daffy Duck in the, what was the name of the series, the show? In the 1950 Warner Brothers short, The Ducksters. Okay, so I think quiz has been replaced. 
So I think it might be talk show. Um, so I think it's you. I think it's probably something like you bet your duck. All right. I changed the word television to the word radio. Or oh, radio nice. The word television. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. All right. So it's a radio show. Um, uh, it's a radio show, but it's still a quiz show. Oh, man, it still really wants to be You Bet Your Life, doesn't it? Um, uh, wow. Um, oh, man, I feel like I should know this. Uh, definitely seen the cartoon. Um, I, I'm still going with You Bet Your Duck. All right, Mike, if you can hear me. I can. Uh, A different screen here, so give me one second. No worries. A little technical difficulty. One Live theater consider, ain't nothing like it. One it's now a radio show. Yeah, it's not a radio show. So it was not Bet Your Life. It was Truth or Ah! Truth or Ah! <laughs> yeah, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let me right. switch computers here. You're good. You're good. All right. Well, then I, I'm going to uh, move on in flavors here because I got to eat something. Uh, let's do a rum raisin. Nope, sorry, lying. Premium mint. Premium mint. Premium mint is good. It is very good. It's very good. If you're not eating these uh, Japanese Kit Kats, why aren't you helping me? Mm. That's a good question. That's a great question. All right. So, Mike. Uh, My turn. It's your turn. All right. I should have really. See, if I if this was the maze of games right now, I would be You'd tearing be Ripping it to pieces. All right. I like this question. I'd be a tearing lot. a flame into darkness, by the way. I like this a lot. You ready? Yes, sir. Go for it. Uh, the category is 80s action films. This is by Ed Grabianowski. In question, that is. Not the action film. Mm -hmm. um, producers were contractually obligated to offer the 73-year-old Frank Stallone the lead role in what classic 80s action movie because he'd starred in a movie that was technically its prequel 20 years earlier? Uh, this is one of my favorite trivia questions, believe it or not. I don't like and that so, you know the answer. So uh, not only do I know that it's not Frank Stallone, who <laughs> in his own right is... Action star. Choice. Such a <laughs> choice. Uh, I'm going to say it's Frank Sinatra. That's and, correct. The movie is Die Hard. That is true. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, he he did his perform, um, performance with Ella Fitzgerald in Vermont. What does that mean? Um, uh, the name, of, I believe it was the name of the movie. Oh, okay, got it. Was, yeah. got it. Got it, All right, well, I lost that one. Um, I'm going to eat this. Oh, I'm going to eat this Momiji Manju Aji, which is, I don't know, it's kind of like a, uh, hazelnutty thing, I guess. You think I, I know? I like that you're eating flavors. You have no idea what they are. I That's have no idea what this is going to taste like. Um. Oh. I hope it's nothing you're allergic to, because that would really no. cut this game. We either we have not. to speed this up. We might have to speed the game up before you know. I'll let you know if I need a heart injection. Um. Yeah. Uh, sort of a paste. I don't know what that is, but it's good. I like it. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Here we go. Here's your question. It's from Matthew Baldwin. Okay. Um, I got to figure out what I'm going to change here. All right. So the DEF CON system prescribes five graduated levels of readiness or states of alert for the U.S. military from DEF CON, DEF CON 5, least severe, severe to DEF CON 1, the most severe. The U.S. has never been at DEF CON 1. Uh, how many times has it been at DEF CON 2? Do you think, did you change the word 5 to 2 at the end of that? That's what I think you did. Um, read that to me again. Sure. The DEF CON system prescribes five graduated levels of readiness or states of alert for the U.S. military from DEF CON 5, least severe, to yep. DEF CON 1, the most severe. The U.S. has never been at DEF CON 1. How many times has it been at DEF CON 2? 
I think it's DEF CON 5, and I think the answer is zero. I think it started at DEF CON 4. I don't know if this question is right, but my, I, I, I think I may have misread it. But uh, it was, I actually, you know what? I, I misread it as so I'm looking at a different screen. I didn't change anything in the question. So that's oh, not you can you. do. Oh, uh, that was my fault. That was my fault. Oliver's taking a hit. No, oh, no, no. Oliver took was, a hit for what, that. Oliver was it DEF CON 2? All right. It's so DEF CON 2. So we'll go for no, The US has been at DEF CON 2 once with the Cuban Missile Crisis. It has been at twice. Oh, what's twice. the second one? Uh, it, uh, let's see if I, they wrote uh, from October 24th until 19, uh, November 15th during the Cuban missile, missile Crisis and on January 15th, 1991 in the opening phase Open. of Operation uh, Desert absolutely. Storm. Absolutely, yeah, sure, sure, sure. All right. Well, no, don't don't trick me by not tricking me, Will. Well, I, I, again, I'm looking at the screen and I look in, so that was my fault on that one. But okay. hey. All right. Uh, I, I have a question for you. It is from Ryan. Oh, wait, you didn't get the question right. What? You, you just get a rush. Question. It's all good. Okay. Uh, don't um, you have to eat something? I did, do. I have to. Eat? I didn't get it. Oh, but I didn't get it right. But you asked. Her. Okay, fair enough. I'll finish the tangerine. Okay, there you go. All right, hit me up. All right, we're back in this. We got this. I should just ask the question while I'm eating. Yes. Um. What word? Not a proper noun. Has three capital letters in a row. I'm going to guess you changed it from three to two. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it could be a proper noun, but I mean. I said it was not a proper noun. I wouldn't lie to you, Will. Oh, I, I know, Mike. Uh, <laughs> let's go with, um, I want to say, the. I, I don't know the answer, but I want to say you change it from three to two. Oh, so you want me to tell you what I changed? Yes. I changed uh, capital. Uh, the answer, the word that was there was dotted. No, you're fine. Well, it was fine. You can answer the question now. No, it cost me there. Uh, so with, with what? what would you... Three dotted letters in a row. Three dotted letters in a row. Or so, um... so it's probably I-J-I or J-I-J. Um... Probably, since those are the dotted letters. Uh, well, you don't know how I spell. Um, <laughs> I do know how you spell. So um, I want to say it's I J I, but I don't know yeah. if I like Kaji or something like Kaiji, K A I I K A I. This is a, this is a, a common English word. It is not derived from Japanese. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is something like hijacking, but it's, the, it's uh, you're so close. Uh, hi, Jinx. Hi, Jinx. Hi, that's hi, correct. Jinx. Hi, Jinx. I would like you to know that it is in this submitted question spelled with an X, which I've never seen in my life. Ah. So, all right. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh, get to this next question. Um, take a look at it. All right. Here we go. Uh, here's your question in the sports mm. uh, category. Uh, I'm ready. It's by, Math it's by Matthew Winberry. Okay. All right. Uh, it says. Sports. How many times has the city of Vancouver celebrated an American Cup championship? Well, okay. So I assume what you meant, what you meant is America's Cup. Um, so uh, the America's Cup is given for sailing and is generally awarded to a country. So I think that's the Stanley Cup. It is the Stanley Cup. You're yeah, correct. I think that's the Stanley Cup. Um, they have, I don't believe, oh man, has the Canucks ever won a Stanley Cup? They have certainly not won it in a very long time. Certainly not won it in 50 years. Have they done it prior to that? I'm going to say that they, oh, do I, do I want to say that they did do it prior to 50 years ago, or do I want to go with zero? I think they must have won it at some point. So I'm going to say one. You are correct. The answer is one. Yeah. But yeah. I want what? to warn you, the answer is it actually was not the Vancouver Canucks at all. Oh, was it? What, what was it called back then? 
the Vancouver Millionaires. Millionaires. <laughs> but you got it right. So. What I love is that the, the pinnacle of, of economic <laughs> result for athletes at the time was a million dollars. Right, exactly. And, right? and no one has ever gotten a contract for more than a million dollars since. So Yeah, no, not a, no, no. All right, I got that one right? You got that one right. Good job. All right. Okay, so uh, your category, this was from Miles Nye. Okay. Your question is about U.S. state capitals. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, oh, man, I wish I hadn't read that out loud. Uh, I'm glad you did. Because I would have changed the word U.S. to Canadian. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, uh, all right. So what is the one U.S. capital city that shares no vowels with the name of its state. I think you changed the word vowels to letters. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like I've heard this not too long ago. I also feel uh, like I've heard it, but I'm glad I'm looking at the answer and not trying to figure out. What yeah. Uh, so uh, give me a second. I I'm gonna give you a hint. It's not Indianapolis, Indiana. <laughs> um so you only again, got I feel I feel like I just saw this not too long ago, but I'll be honest with you, I don't want to take too much time thinking about it either. Um I'm gonna say it out loud, whatever it is, and it's gonna end up being uh wrong because I'm gonna know right away. Um boy, I don't I, I off the top of my head, I'm trying to go through the cities as fast as I can. Uh you want another hit? No, no. I'll just, I'll just randomly say, uh, you know, Carson City, Nevada, and I know that's not correct. That's not correct, as it turns out. It's Pierre, South Dakota. Pierre, South Dakota. Yeah. All right. Bring All right, me, here we go. Next question. Bring me a question. All right. This is from uh, Richard Molina Webb. Uh, what is the name of the Dungeons Dragons monster, which features both a uh, cacophony of soft whispers? And slurping noises and milky other well other worldly tentacles. Did you change a word this time? I did. Milky otherworldly tentacles. I don't like the idea of milky tentacles. Like that makes me feel ill. And it's not the Kit Kats talking. The Kit Kat bars, right, right. <laughs> um, milky tentacle. It's the next Kit Kat bar. It sure You're could be. Enjoy. It is the combination of the radioactive monster and, uh, <laughs> That's right. and the Kit Kat. Absolutely. Uh, 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 I'm going to say that you changed Milky and that they are some other kind of tentacle. Uh, some wooden wooden tentacles i think uh and i think that's the susurrus all right the word i changed was monster it was supposed to be spell oh geez wow i really screwed up i got killed in the dungeons and dragons question how about that this is a first it's not a first anyway uh so that's you words black tentacles it is uh, not the correct answer. Uh, it is, uh, well, it's similar to it, but it's uh, the answer is saying is the hunger of Hadar. Oh, the hunger of Hadar, sure. You know what I am? I'm hungry for Hadar. I'm mm. going to eat a Benny Emo purple sweet potato Kit Kat. Oh, God. <laughs> no, it's purple sweet potato. You got you to gotta like purple sweet potatoes, right? I, I, uh, there's, a place, there's a place local to me that makes purple sweet potato donuts. And they only make them once a week. And they're all right. They're all right. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Very sweet potato. -y. You kids out there, you should get your sweet potato kick us. All right. You're okay. Is it my turn to read a question? It is your turn to read a question. Read away. Okay. Um, sure. All right. Euler's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. What common SI unit is the name for this amount of anything? Uh, so it's not Euler, it's like avocado. It's, it's, it's not avocados. Not avocado, uh, avocado, I can't remember saying his name. <laughs> it but, is uh, avocado's number, that's uh, Avogadro, and it's, uh, it's a mole. 
that's correct. You just knew. Fentanyl. It's funny that when you get a math question, you get it right. All right. Um, All right. I'm going to enjoy your some, uh, Sakura Japanese sake is what I'm going to eat. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, and it's got a it's got a pungent uh, smell to it. <laughs> Pungent is, is oh. never a good word. Which, oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Here, wa- hey, oh, boy. Oliver's watching you. Oliver's watching you. Better eat that oh, whole boy. thing. All right. On a scale of one to four, what do you got there? Oh, I mean, it's pretty tasty. But All it's right. a kick in the brain, too. So here we go. This should be an interesting question for you. Uh, what is the estimated ground speed velocity of an unladen swallow? <laughs> this um, question comes from Tyler Tinsley. Awesome. Uh, I would like to know if you mean an African or European swallow. <laughs> I, 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 I cannot tell you that. <laughs> I don't believe that's your quest. I believe that is my quest. I don't know that we ever find out the answer to that in the movie. Do we ever find it out? Well, it's 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 flight speed, uh, um, but uh, God, I don't think we ever actually find that out in the movie. So I guess I just have to know what swallows how I'll fast. What, I, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a range of answers here. So if you say the answer, yeah, uh, it'll be it'll be in meters per second, I'm, or or you could give it meters, to me miles. Oh, you per, want give you it want, to I me miles per, hour, miles per hour, miles per hour, miles per hour, and I'll give uh, it to you. I'll give it to you three I think, either way. I think I think a a swallow can go three miles an hour. It can go twenty miles an hour. Oh my god, I'm so far wrong. This is not your quest. <laughs> Uh, apparently, I get thrown off a bridge now. Yes, I believe that is correct. <laughs> Are you drinking liquid Kit Kats now? I, no, I just, just melt them down and just. Mm. I'm gonna eat the rest of the sake one. Yeah, you are. The Japanese sakura sake. It's it's um it's you know sakura is uh is cherry blossoms, right? Sure. So, yeah. And is there it a smells like you, sake. Is there ever a flavor you've gotten a Kit Kat that you don't? Oh no, I would eat another one of everything. Okay. Oh, All right, uh, you are up when you are ready. Hold on. Okay. This I'm doing this. I want to point out, I'm doing this for charity. Um, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So, you guys can help that charity as well. That's right. So, so if you like seeing me die from anaphylactic shock, um, then you should donate to Child's Play, childsplay.org. Or feedingamerica.org. Did I get it right? The website? You got it right. Yeah. Feedingamerica.org. They will not uh, give people Japanese Kit Kats. They will give them real food (laughs) that has nutrients in it. And so uh, I would really like it if everybody watching this would just make a note to themselves to kick $5 over to one of those two charities by the end of this broadcast or right after. You make make us very happy. And I'm not stalling between now and the night. I need to (laughs) eat the next Kit Kat. I'm trying to actually raise money for charity here. So, um, Uh, man, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to see after this. (laughs) Um, Okay, you ready for a question? Uh, yes, please. And if you could, if you could make sure you're getting enough oxygen while you ask it, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Okay, this is from Jeff Raven. The other question I just read about the mole was also from Jeff. Um, okay. What four ingredients are needed for a combustion reaction? Uh, God, combustion reaction is a thing. So. Um... I want to say it's three. I think you're lying to me. I don't think it's four. You don't think I changed combustion? No, I don't. Uh, I think it's three. And I want to say it's like fuel, That's oxygen, That's and ignition. Another. Yeah, and you got like, all three of them. And yeah, yeah. there's only three. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm pretty sure. I'm like going through my head. I'm pretty sure there's three of them. I, like, I looked Woo! at that and I, I also knew the answer, right? So I was like, what can I change here to make this harder? Oh, wait, I'll make him think there's a fourth one. <laughs> I don't think people need to understand. I think people people do need to understand that we didn't see these questions ahead of time. We're editing these. No, on we're, the we're fly. seeing them we're live to... time. We don't we don't get to look at them ahead of time or anything like that. All right, I'm gonna eat this. Um, the rest of the mint one. 
All right. See, see, this is why I chose no food challenges. Originally, I was going to do 100 Oreos, and then I realized mm. I have things to do tomorrow. I can't, you know. I regret everything. Don't use that phrase. I, I regret every decision I made today. <laughs> the only All thing right. I'm hoping for is that this panel ends before I have a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, let you know, keep testing that arm. Let me know. Let me yep. see some movement. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, Jeff has also sent this question to us. Um, let's see here. Um, neon is used as an indicator for which macro molecule, liquids, prote lipids, proteins, or carbohydrates? Neon, you say. Well, it wouldn't be fair if you changed one of the three choices because if it was like <laughs> if it was actually like oils and i said lipids you would be like haha I, 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 so it's gotta be neon um so oh man uh, but there is a <laughs> like like all of those are revealed by something um I'm going to say that the answer is lipids. Uh, it is incorrect. It's carbohydrates. And the word was replaced uh, was iodine. Iodine. Yeah. I knew that. I was going to say iocane powder, but I thought. Yeah, iocane. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I built up an immunity to that. Dude, that's right. But not to Kit Kats that taste very, you know. I, I'm sure that there's an iocane flavored Kit Kat in here. <laughs> um, let's see. What happened? I had. It. Uh, let's do, well, that's interesting. Okay. So I don't know if people can see this. This is a polar bear flavored Kit Kat. <laughs> There's no indication whatsoever what flavor it is. It's just got an ice cube on it and it's got a polar bear on it. So I'm guessing it's ice cube flavored. Ladies and gentlemen, go out and buy the new game from Lone Shark Games before Mike dies. And oh, he's not oh. Able to see. oh, it's probably like a cookies and cream. Okay. That's not bad. Does it taste like polar bear? Well, does it taste like you? Does it taste like you're in? Uh, you know, you've destroyed the environment. I've only had polar bear fried, not grilled. Oh, okay, yeah. But, oh man, it's yeah. I think it's cooking the cream. It's good. Um, okay, good, good. It turned out all right. Okay, um, let's see. I want to jump to the end just to make sure that we don't lose any people who've submitted things um yeah okay cool 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 um all right um okay uh i think this one's from Ch our guy chad um okay there's no name listed in the field so i'm gonna guess it's from chad and i like gotcha. it so this now classic video game console uses a compact disc rather than a joystick. Compact disc instead of a joystick. Um, boy, uh, I want to say it's like maybe like, like a, like a um, controller disc. And I want to say you're thinking about the Intellivision. Holy cow, that was really good. I am so impressed by that. I own an intelligent. I still own yeah. it, actually. I no, still have it. I go down and play Astro Smash every once that, in a while. I, that was a surgical hit on me. All right, it's time for the wasabi. We're, we're hearing that the polar bear uh, Kit Kat is vanilla. It's just straight up vanilla. It's oh, not vanilla? cookies that and cream. I mean, it's a weird sort of mottled black and white color. Oh, whatever. I'm going to eat this wasabi. Apparently oh, wasabi. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna get to the wasabi because we're hey, this is a good like, time for everybody to make a donation because yeah, I might this, die. This cast, this cast might not last. last I might die. Um, okay. Uh, oh, wasabi's good. Okay. Well, like traditional Japanese wasabi is not as hot as American yeah. wasabi. Like American wasabi is just horseradish, right? It's good. Yeah. Okay. All right, hit me up. All right, uh, let's do this one. Here we go. Um, this one, uh, Chicago sports, something we yes. both might have a little I, bit of in common. We, we have had many conversations about Chicago sports. Uh, you probably know that Soldier Field is the home of the NFL's Chicago Bears. I don't believe you've changed anything in the question so far. 
So you think. Uh, <laughs> during the 1980s, it was also the home to which uh, USNL Chicago team? Oh my gosh. USNL. What sport is that? Oh, unless it's the USFL, which is what it probably is. So it's another Chicago team. Oh, man. What was the USFL team? Uh, was that the Blitz? Was that the it Chicago was the Blitz? Blitz? It was the Blitz. Holy cow. I don't know where I pulled that from. I'm sorry, Oliver. No, I, you're not. You're I'm not. not sorry, Oliver. You're not sorry. You don't understand. Like, at the beginning of this, I was like, I'm super excited. I'm going to eat some Kit Kat. <laughs> now I'm not as excited. Uh, wait till you get to that arsenic flavored one. Oh, it's, 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 be... down, it's, in the, it's in the thing. Yeah, All right. It's um, be great. Okay. Uh, sure, 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 sure. Um, okay. Uh, the developers of this is from J. Earl. The developers of a popular multiplayer game recently revealed that they had a place to send uh, cheaters called Fantasy Island. What is the name of this game? Well, I don't think it was Fantasy Island. I think it was like the Fantasy Zone, I think is if I want to guess what it was. And I want to say it was Animal Crossing. Uh, it's a good guess. Uh, the the word I changed uh, was cheater. It's cheater island, uh, uh, but it's not Animal Crossing. So uh, it's a I'm... very popular game right now. I, I mean, I guess Fortnite, I guess, is what it would be. Uh, it's not Fortnite. Sadly, it's Fall Guys um, or Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, if you prefer. I have not played it yet. That's, uh, yeah, but that's because yet. you're not a cheater. So you've never been to Cheater Island. That's true. True. Say hi to Tom Brady for me while you're there. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers legend. Tom Brady. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, this is going to be uh, a very interesting question. Uh, this professional sports team's mascot is named, um, well, I'm giving this away, Scarlet Sam. Scarlet Sam. Scarlet Sam. Okay, so he's so it's it's probably probably something else, Sam. Oh man, could be Scarlet something. Probably not Scarlet O'Hara. That would be the Atlanta Falcons, I guess. Um, that would be the Baltimore. Frankly, I don't give a damn. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, shoot. Something Sam. Cavity Sam? No. Yes, Uncle yes. Sam? No. Uh, yes. Oh. The, the Utah the Utah uh, operations. Yes. I think it was the name <laughs> of that team. I think, the, I think the Vancouver Millionaires moved to Utah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, a little known. Little known. <laughs> little known fact. Very little known. Uh, very few people know that. Um, I don't know what this is. Um, I think it is the the West West Western Kentucky Mountaineers, and that's the big the big red monster. Uh, the uh, so the answer so this might help you think about the word I'm going to tell you. So it's not okay. uh, it's not scarlet. It's sourdough. Sourdough, Sam. Oh, sourdough, Sam. So it's a so what's sourdough like? Why was that? A, how did that become famous? Like, right? It's a baking related football team that's common uh but who but who made sour well why was sourdough like important who would it have been important to uh i'm gonna guess this is the milwaukee brewers no well it's it's uh it's so it's the nfl team the san francisco oh, 40 49 49 49ers oh yeah okay sure 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 all right, what are you eating there, my man? What are you eating? What you, oh, what you chomping God. at? Um, uh, let's go with strawberry cheesecake. Oh, okay. Safe. Strawberry safe. cheesecake's good. Little known fact, in Japan, strawberry cheesecake is really spicy. That's not true. Okay. Mm. Okay. Um, it's your long... Okay. Uh, 
All right. Um, the um, question here, uh, I believe it's from Chad, is in this film, the USS Enterprise is led by a captain with the motto, never give up, never surrender. Well, obviously, it's, it's not the Enterprise anymore. Uh, the USS... I may have oh. changed two words. I'm in a chocolate coma at the moment. Well, sure, sure. well that makes up for me not changing one before. <laughs> I, uh, changed, I changed two consecutive words to <laughs> USS Enterprise. I apologize. Okay, so uh, never give up, never surrender. So it's obviously a ship and... Um, I don't know if I know that. Never oh, I can't believe I'm going to get this one. I want to get this one. Tell me what uh, what you changed it from. I the, changed what... to USS Enterprise. I changed NSEA Protector. Oh, wow. I'm so happy that you don't know this. I don't know. I'm like stumped on I don't know it. Uh, all right. You giving up? Yes. That's Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest. Oh, man, why did I not know that? Yeah, you've seen the movie. Yeah, I've seen it. I haven't seen it in a long, long while. Long. Well, while. You, you know I've who hasn't Die seen Hard it? Frank Sinatra, though. You, you know. know who hasn't seen it? Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Oliver. I Oliver's been torn up. All right. Well, not at my. All right. So let me just confirm something. We have like five minutes left. Is that right? Okay. All right. Oh, this wow. one's for all the marbles, except for. We're not playing for marbles. No, this one. Oh, but we've only got five minutes left, so we're going to do uh, just a couple more questions. Okay, great. All right, so uh, here we go. Question for you. Uh, uh, let's see which one's good. This classic computer game takes place in the city of Scarabra or Scarabra. But hint, despite its name, it's not related to Chaucer. Okay. Um not related to Chaucer suggests that it's a knight's tale so I think it's a bard's tale hey it's a bard's tale good job yeah I don't know wow, that, was, that was a circuitous path I got to do that one um okay uh all right I'm gonna give one more and then you're gonna give more and then we're gonna wrap this up sure okay um uh okay um it's pretty good um uh no that one's too easy that one's too easy um i need to go out go out strong here all right here we go this one's from rei nakazawa okay what japanese mythical being is sometimes said to be a normal frog that somehow becomes unusually un sorry unusually intelligent and long-lived long-lived I don't think it's a frog. Oh. Um, well, that's not good. You shouldn't have been able to figure that out. Um, You got it? I don't know. I don't know it. I don't I don't know if I know it. Oh, it's a fox. Okay. Oh, so it's it... um name escapes me. I keep thinking Okami, but it's not Okami, right? It's... No, you're close though. Um I don't know it. I don't know it. It's the Kitsune. Oh, Kitsune. Oh, I it's fox. It. All right. Uh we are just a minute away from being done. I think um I'm gonna uh, uh surrender. Uh, so that you can have good, uh, good, good relationship with your dog <laughs> from here on in, and also I don't have to eat any more of these things. I am suspecting that I have at least oh. uh, sixty dollars left, so I'll have... be making a a donation of that amount of money to feedingamerica.org. Yeah, I still have I still have about I think I have a forty five or fifty left. Um so I'll just round it to that. Um hey everybody uh that was sabotage trivia. Uh I'm Mike Selinker. That's I think still Will uh over there. Uh, 
yeah um i can't see anymore um just so everybody knows um and i'm about to have my stomach pump but um but this was a super fun this worked out i think and uh so we'll do it again the next packs i just want to let everybody know one thing on sunday at what at uh, 2 15 p.m you can see me elisa teague joshua boggs and summer herrick do a panel called how to puzzle in your game if you like puzzle panels come to that it's really great i know that already because we recorded it in advance so i'm going to sleep through it but you should watch it uh it's 2 15 on pax 2 and on youtube and on on um facebook and thank you again i'm mike selger lone shark games go to our site play all our games we love you thanks pax we'll talk to you soon